Hey everyone, Dan here from Evolving SEO and the Experts on the Wire podcast. Today, I want to show you how to write better brand meta descriptions. So first, why is this important? If you're running especially a big brand, like my example Macy's here, you have over 12 million people a month going to Google and typing your brand name or some version of it into Google. Even a smaller site, like my example here, Moog Synthesizers, this is a small niche instrument company, they even have 3,600 people typing Moog synthesizers into Google a month, and there's probably a lot more than that. So the volume here is important. Your consumers, your customers that you're trying to retain and make a good impression towards are going to Google and they're getting an impression about your brand, whether you realize it or not, from Google's meta description and description of your brand. So I want to highlight a bad example here first, just to show that if you're somebody going to Macy's, this might not leave the best brand impression. It's okay, it's not like it's terrible, but it's not as good as some of the great examples and formula that I have to share with you. So if you go to Google today and you type Macy's, it says Macy's, shop fashion, clothing, accessories, official site, macy's.com. By the way, I'm gonna take a detailed picture of this entire board so you can read it online. I'm gonna post a snapshot at evolvingseo.com slash meta if you're not on that page right now, if you're watching this maybe in YouTube. You can go to evolvingseo.com where you can see this whiteboard screenshotted because I know it might be tough to read everything here. I'm filming it with my, my MacBook Pro, not a professional camera. And I'm also gonna have 15 examples of all the meta descriptions for you in addition to some other fun stuff. But anyways, back to my example. Macy's meta description says, Macy's, free shipping at macy's.com. Macy's has the largest fashion brands on women's and men's clothing, accessories, jewelry, beauty, shoes, and home. It's kind of boring. It's not really compelling. It doesn't really make me excited to shop at Macy's. And granted, Macy's is a big brand. Everybody knows about them. They're kind of looked at as a big consumer company. So you might shop at Macy's just because you know and like them. And they can get away with kind of a not so great meta description. But I have some ways that I believe you and everybody out there watching can improve your meta description, whether you're a big brand, medium brand, or even a small site, to give users a better impression of you when they're searching in Google. So first of all, before I get to the, the tactile tactical, tangible ingredients. Let's talk about the elements of what I believe makes a great meta description to begin with. Those are right here. And I'm gonna to try to read everything because I know it might be tricky to see everything on the board. So it says, great brand meta descriptions. They, number one, they make the customer, look at how I went off screen right there. Bye everyone. They make the customer the hero. Now you may have heard lately about the so-called hero's journey. It's very common in writing, especially fiction writing. But for example, somebody in my podcast talked about the hero's journey and how to put that into your marketing and your product and everything. This is the number one thing that I believe a great meta description does. It makes the customer the, the center focus of everything you're talking about in the description. Number two, you're using the meta description to reinforce your brand message to reinforce the things that you're saying out there on other channels. If you're spending, if you're Macy's and you're spending millions of dollars on ads to get millions of people to see it, yet you don't care what 156 characters says in the meta description for your brand name, there's a disconnect there, right? Because you're spending millions on ads to cast an impression about your brand, to try to get consumers to believe and feel a certain thing about your company, yet, the meta description, an easy fix, it goes ignored. So you're using the meta description to reinforce your brand message. And finally, similar but slightly different, you wanna have a nice aesthetic and a nice flow to your meta description. Almost think about it as being a little poetic, right? It should be easy to read, but it should also, in the sense, match with your brand voice and your brand tone, right? So in branding, we've got the message, which is the actual words and the information that you're conveying, but we've also got the brand tone. That's kind of maybe the emotion or the feel of it that it might be conveying. So a great brand meta description, homepage meta description should do these things. Now, how do we get there? How do we achieve that? That's where we're gonna move over here to the three ingredients of a great 
brand meta description. We've got three ingredients, problem, solution, and outcome. Now, these are three very common things that go into marketing material, right? People that do CRO will often optimize their landing pages to highlight the problem, to show that they have the solution, and then explain or convey what the outcome of that solution is going to be. And in fact, I had uh, Amy Harrison on my podcast, who is one person that talked about this framework. But what I don't see people doing is putting this in their meta descriptions. It's a great place for it, right? A lot of the, the mistake a lot of people make is they think that they need to stuff keywords into their meta description to get, to get them to rank. Now, supposedly Google says that the meta descriptions do not factor into ranking. I'd actually like to test this. I suspect that maybe that's not entirely black or white or true. We can't always take everything Google says to be completely true at face value. So it's something I'd like to test, but you really don't need to just try to stuff your keywords in the meta description. Rather, use it to convey this three-part framework, which will then help paint the picture of the user being the hero and cast the right brand impression for your company. So. Part number one is the problem. You want to somehow convey directly or indirectly that you understand the challenges, the pain, or the emotional difficulties that the searcher is going through. So it's often to use emotion words, and you're gonna see that in my example. Number two, you want to somehow convey that you have the solution on that product, on that service, uh, for the person's problem. So very often, the mistake that people make is they include only this in their meta description because it's natural and easy to list your product, to list your service, to list your features. It comes naturally to the person that that's their world, right? If, you, or if you're selling shoes, you're going to list shoes. That's your world. That's the thing that you are immediately going to think of. Number three, and this is the really critical piece. If you do this right, you're going to be way ahead of all of the other meta descriptions out there. You want to highlight the outcome. You want to paint a picture of the result of the solution. How is your solution going to bring the person from the problem to the outcome that they want to achieve? Now, the outcome can be a tangible thing. It can be make more money, make more sales. But you really want to consider including possibly an emotional outcome in this feel better, feel less frustrated, feel more confident. And you're going to see some examples here and at the 15 examples at evolvingseo.com slash meta. You can also take the approach of implying the outcome by stating maybe what you believe. So think Simon Sinek's talk about why and how he explains that, you know, people that are app users of Apple products or they love Harley Davidson, they feel like they're a part of a club because they kind of believe the things that those pro the people in those products in the company believe. So you can sort of state an outcome and imply it by saying, by stating what you believe as a company, because somebody reading that might say, might recognize that, say, oh, I want to identify with that. So I'm going to choose this company. I like this company. That reinforces your brand and your message. Now, let's get to the two examples that I have here. Let me switch sides. And then I want to encourage everyone to make sure you're at evolvingseo.com slash meta. There it is where you can find all 15 examples. Example number one, mod cloth. I love mod cloth's example here. So again, I'm going to read all these in case you can't see them. But mod cloth's meta description says, feel confident, look stunning, and be the best you. Shop mod cloth for fashionable vintage style must-haves, including clothing, swimwear, decor, shoes, and more. So I want to break these apart a little bit and look for each element. So what mod cloth has done is they've really put the outcome at the forefront. And this is what I love so much about mod cloth's meta description. They've said directly, feel confident, look stunning, and be the best you. They're not saying that they've got the cheapest clothes or the best products. They're telling you as a consumer how you are going to feel by using their company, by using their website. This is a fantastic way to represent yourself as a brand, especially if people are searching ModCloth thousands or hundreds of thousands of times a month into Google. Then they follow it up by saying what you can do there and that what you can shop for on ModCloth. So now they're listing 
the solution that will bring about the outcome. So they're actually starting with outcome and then they're going to solution. And what you can realize here is what they've done is they've implied the problem. And I notice a lot of people do this, that you don't have to state the problem. You don't have to state like at the beginning, you wouldn't put feeling ugly, shop at mod cloth. You're implying that you know the person might wanting, be wanting to feel more confident. And by stating that, you're implying that you understand their problem is maybe they don't feel confident. Maybe they don't feel like their best selves. The second example is actually Bing. So if you go to Google and you search Bing, this is what you're gonna see. But I love Bing's meta description. I wish their product would follow it up a little bit better. But anyways, Bing's meta description, I'm off camera again, says Bing helps you turn information into action, making it faster and easier to go from searching to doing. I love Bing's meta description. So Bing is telling you the outcome or result of what you're gonna get by using their search engine. They're not saying find the website you wanna find or find the product you wanna find. They're not telling you the direct result of their product. That's a feature. They're not telling you the feature of their search engine. They're telling you the outcome of what you're gonna find. They're telling you that what they're, they're actually conveying that they're going to empower you to do what you want to do. You're going to turn, you're going to turn information into action. You're going to make, it's going to be faster. It's, <laughs> I can't talk. It's going to be faster. It's going to be easier to find. And you're going to go from doing what you want to do and, and Bing is going to move out of the way. So that's what Bing is conveying here is that they're enabling you to move on with what you were trying to do. Admittedly, Google, in most cases, does this better than Bing. I wish Bing's product actually did this a little bit better, but that's a whole separate debate. So again, you can go to evolvingseo.com to find all of the evolvingseo.com slash meta to find all of the 15 examples. I also want to encourage you, if you're watching down below, to share examples of meta descriptions that you love, that you think are great, that you th think hit all three of these points here. And you can also see where I'm going to share the example of uh, I rewrote Evolving SEO's homepage meta description. I'm going to share it on that page as well, on that URL, and I encourage everyone to let me know what you think. I hope this was helpful. Get out there and write better meta descriptions, make a better impression on your brand, and make your customers love you even more. Thanks for watching.